Okay, so now we're on question three for um, January 2019, physics. To, um, yeah, so this is question three. So it says, state law of conservation of energy. We've learned this in first grade, I mean, sorry, in uh, um, first form, second form. And so it's come back. So energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed from one type to another. Then it says a goalkeeper drops a football of mass 0 0.43 kilograms vertically downwards from rest at a height of one meter. Calculate the velocity of the ball as it makes contact with the ground. Assume no air resistance or wind present to, to you know, alter the fall, to slow the fall. So here goes. Um, the question asks about conservation of energy. So we could use... The energy stored up will be the energy used. That is, the potential energy is equal to the kinetic energy. And you know, when you're solving for um, velocity, to solve, so know that mv squared over 2 is also a half mv squared. It's the same thing. So now we're going to try to solve for this, um, for v. Okay? So how you do that? You if, you, if you, if something is being divided, if 2 is in the division, you're going to do the opposite of 2 and multiply by 2. So you're going to end up with 2mgh equals to mv squared. You still have a friend with v, so you're going to divide. Because this is being multiplied, so you do the opposite. You divide by m and m. Okay? And if you notice something here, m and m will be the same mass because... It's the same mass at potential energy as kinetic energy, so they're going to cancel out. Okay? So you're going to have with 2GH equal to V squared, but still you have this square sign here. To get rid of the square, multiply both um, sides, the exponents. This is raised to 1. You multiply both exponents to a half. 2 times a half leaves 1. 1 times a half leaves a half. So 2GH <coughs> raised to the power of a half is equal to V. A half, this is actually the square root sign. So it says square root of 2gh equal to v. Now we're going to solve for v. Before you do all of that, we list all the things. Now mass doesn't matter, so we don't care about that. But we have the initial velocity, which is um, 0 meters squared. That's the velocity. And we have the height. The height is also distance which is 1.5 meters. And we also have gravity. So we have gravity, which we say due to ac acceleration due to gravity, which is 10 meters per second squared. Now you have, now you have G, which gravity is equal to acceleration. Okay? Gravity is equal to acceleration. So the 10 meters per second squared, you're going to place it inside here. So if you look at this equation, you will see that G, we have G, and we have H. H represents S, which is the distance from which the ball is falling. So we have these two, these two arm letters. So what we're going to do, we're going to put in the square root 2 times 10 meters per second squared times 1.5 meters and that will give us 2 times so we have here 2 times 10 times 1.5 that gives us 30 so I could put in here square root of 30 meters squared over second squared equal to v and the square of that now would be 5.5 meters per second so that is the velocity okay so let's calculate velocity now suppose you didn't know this um how to equate them suppose you didn't know ep equal to ek you could also use one of these four equations since we're dealing with motion Okay, so we have four equations of motion. You have b equals to u plus at, b squared equals to u squared plus 2as, 
s equals c u t plus a t squared over 2 and s equals c u plus v in brackets multiplied by t over 2. So you want to look for things that you have. Again, you have u, s, and a. And now you and you all and you're looking for final velocity, which is x. You have u, s, and a. Where do we have u? We have u in all of these, so we can't eliminate any yet. Do we have s? We have s. S is not here, so we have to eliminate number one. We have s in two. We have s in three, and we have s in four. So we're still dealing with that. Now, do we have a? We have a in 2 and 3, so we're going to eliminate 4 because we have that. Now, what are we looking for? V, which equation out of these two has the variable V? Correct. It has this. It's number 2. So we're going to use 2. So if you didn't know how to set you equate EP equal to EK, you could have said, so I can put the big R, V squared equal to U squared plus 2 AS. And we're looking for the final velocity. And what do you know? Final velocity is already out here by the equal sign by itself. But we just need to get rid of the square. And what do we do? We do the same thing we did here. So want to get rid of the square, multiply by a half here. And multiply this whole thing by a half here. So you're going to be left with u squared plus 2as raised to a half. So v is equal to the square root of u squared plus 2as. Good? So you can now put them all into perspective. What is u? 0. 0 times 0 gives you 0. So that goes. So we left, we left left back with um 2as. So you can say 2 times 10 meters per second squared times, and the height is 1.5 meters. Great. And doesn't this look like this? Of course. So, of course, we're going to use now V is equal to 30 meters squared over second squared equal to 5.5 meters per second. Great. Now, it says define the term force. A force is a push or pull. It is an action that changes the shape, size, or motion of a body. That's for one map. Okay, so now we are on question two, part two. Question, yes, so it says here, many types of forces are applied in various situations. Complete table two, inserting the appropriate types of forces and examples. If something is falling in the Earth's atmosphere, it's due to gravity. So that force will be due to gravity. Nuclear forces, this exists within an atom itself. So I would say the attraction of electrons to the nucleus, which contains protons. Okay? Great. Then it says, when a rubber cone picks up a small piece of paper, that's electrostatic forces due to induction, then magnetic, you would write, of course, between magnets, so the attraction existing between the north and so poles of a magnet okay good so gravity then we have the attraction of electrons to the nucleus which um i could say the attraction between the electrons between the electrons and the nucleus and the nucleus, which contains protons. And electrostatic forces um, exist after rubbing 
two materials together, two neutral materials together, and then magnetic forces exist between north and south the, between the north and south poles of a magnet, and it also the, it's also the repulsion existing between like poles. So you could say. The repulsion between like poles. Right? So you have that. Now, for C, you say a class of physics students conducted a student based assessment on the relationship between force and extension for a rubber band. One of the groups introduced, one of the groups produced the following graphs from the results. And they got a graph here, force against extension, you got a straight line graph, and then a curve. So it says state the mathematical relationship between force and extension in the segment OA. So it says in the segment OA, the extension of a spring is directly proportional to the force acting on it, where force is equal to spring constant times tension. So F is equal to K times X. The spring constant is a measure of the stiffness of a spring. It represents the size of force required to stretch the spring by one meter. Okay, so we could go on further and say ask, state the point at which the elastic limit is located. So the point at which the elastic limit is located is at B. And if the if the elastic if the elastic limit is passed, right? If the elastic limit is passed, the spring will be deformed permanently. Guess what? You didn't have to write this. I just wrote it for your knowledge to help you um, understand why. So it says, give a reason for the shape of the segment AB. So this is a segment here on the graph. So the spring is still being stretched. So segment A B indicates that the spring is still being stretched. But the segment is past the limit of proportionality. Since the additional segment Sorry, since the additional extension of the spring will not be proportionate to the force apply. So segment AB indicates that the spring is still being stretched, but the segment is past the limit of proportionality, which is here, where you have the straight line. Since the additional extension of the spring will not be in proportion to the force applied. Good. And do note that a high spring constant, if you get a really high spring constant, it means that the spring is very stiff, right? 
So that's one thing you should take into consideration. And the spring constant is effectively a measure of the stiffness of a spring. Okay, so this is just general knowledge. This is something you would have studied. You didn't have to do any calculations. So this you just had to know how um, the graph look, and you, you just had to know how to interpret the graph, for want of better words. And sometimes you could, because they were judging the force applied, and they kept the they kept the length of the spring constant. That's why the force applied is on the y-axis. But usually in labs, you would have done extension versus um, load, which is the force. You would have done put the extension here and this, and you would have gotten a graph that curve upwards. It's the same thing. It just depends on what you're controlling and what you're judging. Remember, whatever you judge, whatever you judge is usually on the y, and whatever you control is on the x. And so in this case, they have load against extension which is okay and you could do extension against load depending on how your what your lab is judging and controlling right so i think that's it for question three and i really hope this helped <coughs> i really really hope this helped you in some way sayonara